Long time lurker, and I never thought I'd be the one posting here. So here we go. I, 23-year-old female, and my husband, 24-year-old male, have been together for five years. We have two beautiful children together. In this time, while my husband and I have had our fair share of fights and have not been perfect, we have always had a mostly positive relationship. We've always been deeply committed to one another and therefore worked through our issues and continued to better our relationship. I can confidently say I've been extremely happy with him and our marriage for a long time, over two years at least. It's been pretty close to perfect for me. In the entire five years, he's never given me a reason to doubt his fidelity. We've had lengthy discussions about it and what each of our exact boundaries surrounding cheating are. We agreed it was an absolute deal breaker in our relationship, emotional cheating or not. Again, I've always had reason and reassurance to trust him. This seemed to always be his biggest deal, something I've known meant so much to him. His ex did a number on him, and I've reassured him myself countless times that I would never do this to him. We have an open phone policy, free access to everything 100% of the time, passwords included. Neither of us uses this very often. Him more than me, which may be because I trusted him so much. The man only has Facebook and Reddit. Last week, we lost a baby. I was nine weeks along. It was incredibly traumatic for us both. We haven't talked much about it. He's told me it was the most traumatic thing he's ever been through and he never wants to think about it, let alone talk about it again. I planned on respecting that for now and maybe trying again with time. Over the last few days, he's been downloading a lot of idle games. I noticed and we talked about it. Games are usually something we can talk about and bond over. He was excited to show me his new games. Today, I decided for the first time in Embray, I can't remember how long to check his phone. What I found was a message from him to someone on Reddit that said, What's up, my guy? Sorry to hear about your ex. Shoot sucks. Spread those nudes to get back at her. The Redditor replies, Lol, thanks, bro. I'm actually trying to sell them for a fair price because she's taking half my shoot. If you're interested. My husband's account replied, Money is tight right now, my guy. Sorry, I would if I could. I hope it all works out for you, though. This was dated the day we lost the baby. The account has been deleted. But when I click on it from my husband's messages, the header briefly says, Kayla's Coochie. I can only assume it was banned for selling nudes that weren't his. I confronted my husband with this, and he's saying that it wasn't him. He said he didn't even know he could privately message people or how Reddit works. That we've been together this long, and this is the first time he's ever made me doubt him. So I should trust that he would never do this to me. That he must have been hacked because of all the idle games, and that it hurts him so deeply how I'm looking at him and thinking about him that he'll never forget or want to talk to me again. And our relationship is permanently altered because I can't give him one ounce of trust without strangers on the internet validating it. I've been telling him it just doesn't make sense. People don't hack your account to solicit nudes and then back out when you have to pay. Of course, I believe selling or buying nudes without consent is abhorrently wrong. And before this mess, I would say with 100% certainty that my husband would agree. He's offended his character has come into question, and I honestly do feel bad about that. I want to believe him so badly, but I can't ignore what's on his phone screen. So Reddit users, am I the idiot? Is there any way he's telling me the truth? A lot of people are unclear on this, so I want to specify. I have set boundaries we have talked about at length and obtaining another specific person's nudes, from them or not, violates that. He has agreed to that being cheating. That being said, I feel like spread those nudes is loaded. He never denied that. He just said he agrees with me and would never do that to me. I'm not asking if you agree that it's cheating. That's beside the point. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. The I would if I could to buying the nudes of a woman who did not consent to it shows so much of his character. Besides that, he also knows that this behavior is cheating. Don't let him gaslight you and try to be as objective as possible. Like another commenter said, try to see if the language he is using, the grammar, etc. is similar to his writing. I'm so sorry you have to deal with this on top of everything else, sending you love. 
Trust yourself. Comment 2. He must have been hacked? Who would go to that kind of trouble for such a ridiculous outcome? But at least it hurts him deeply. Yeah, that you found it. Deflecting the blame to you is even more telling than the coochie in question. He did it, and he's lying about it. Look around your marriage. This probably isn't his only lie. And I'm sorry about the baby. I'm also sorry about your husband, but you are better off knowing. Now for the update. A lot has happened since my last post, and I'm still reeling from the events. I never thought I'd be back here with an update, but here we are. After I found the messages on my husband's phone, things between us got really tense. We've always been the couple that others looked up to, the ones who had it all figured out. But now, it felt like our foundation was cracking. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, and my husband's insistence that he was hacked just didn't sit right with me. We tried to move past it, to focus on healing after the loss of our baby. That pain was still fresh, a wound that seemed to overshadow everything else. But the trust that had been the bedrock of our relationship was shaken, and I couldn't ignore it. One night, while he was asleep, I decided to do some digging. I remembered that he had a Reddit account he rarely used, and I had the password. I logged in and started looking through his history. That's when I found it. A private message exchange with another user that made my heart drop. The messages were flirty, intimate, and it was clear that this wasn't just a one-time thing. They had been talking for months, sharing personal details about their lives. My husband had even mentioned our children by name. It was a betrayal that cut deep, and I felt like I was living a nightmare. I confronted him the next morning, showing him the messages. He tried to deny it at first, but the evidence was right there. He broke down, admitting that he had been talking to this woman for a while. He said it started as a distraction from the pain of our loss, a way to escape, but it had spiraled into something more, something he never intended. I was heartbroken. This was the man I had built my life with, the father of my children, and yet, here he was, admitting to emotionally cheating on me. It was a violation of everything we had promised each other, and I didn't know how to move forward. We had long talks about what this meant for us. He begged for forgiveness, promising that it would never happen again. He said he would do anything to make it right, to rebuild the trust that had been shattered. But I couldn't shake the feeling of betrayal. The next few weeks were a blur of emotions. We tried to keep things normal for the kids, but the tension between us was palpable. We went to counseling, trying to work through the hurt and anger. But every time I looked at him, I was reminded of the messages, of the intimacy he had shared with someone else. It was during one of our counseling sessions that another bombshell dropped. The woman my husband had been talking to was someone from his past, someone he had known before we met. It was a connection that he had never mentioned to me, a piece of his history that he had kept hidden. I felt like I didn't even know the man I was married to. All the trust we had built over the years, all the conversations about honesty and fidelity felt like a lie. I was struggling to reconcile the man I loved with the man who had betrayed me. We're still trying to work through it, to see if there's a way to come back from this. But it's hard. Every day is a reminder of what happened, of the trust that was broken. I'm not sure where we go from here, but I'm trying to take it one day at a time. Bride tells me I'm not invited to her wedding because she's concerned about my health. I confront her and she admits she's using my health as an excuse to appease her controlling fiance. Oh boy, she's in for a rude awakening. I, 24-year-old female, have been friends with this person, 25-year-old female, for nearly seven years and I considered her to be one of my closest friends. She recently told me that I am not invited to her wedding which is being held outside of the country, because of my chronic health issues. I had a stroke a year ago and I have seizures, though they're small and I don't lose awareness when they happen. She says that she meant to tell me this in person, but she told me this over Snapchat after I asked about the wedding one day. As I said, she listed my health issues as the reason why I'm not invited. As she's afraid of something happening to me on the flight or in X country, that might derail the wedding. I guess she had a cousin whose wedding got thrown off after an aunt died, so she's not inviting me and one of her aunts because of that. 
She also said something about not being able to pay out of pocket for any medical expenses if something happens. But I wouldn't expect her to pay for my medical bills anyway. So that excuse kind of confuses me. I don't know. This mainly hurts so badly because ever since I was like eight years old, I have felt unwanted and like a burden on my family and friends because of my disability and health issues. I was raised in an emotionally unavailable family, so I never received any reassurance that I wasn't a burden. I only saw my mother's frustration with my health, and I was constantly reminded about how hard my surgeries and health issues were on my parents and my siblings. I know I need therapy badly. I just don't have the money for that right now. I know that my insecurities are my responsibility, and I try not to project them onto other people. But this whole situation has reopened that childhood wound, and I feel pretty worthless and disliked because of it. I told said friend that my feelings were hurt, and I think she tried to be empathetic. The conversation occurred over Snapchat, so unfortunately, I can't reread what was said. We haven't talked about this in person, but ultimately, I still feel wounded by the whole thing. I know that I am not entitled to an invitation to her wedding, but I genuinely would have felt less hurt if she had just said, close friends and family only, sorry. She says that they will be hosting a party in the States for friends who aren't attending the wedding, but at this point I don't want to go to that either. I honestly feel like distancing myself from her entirely. How do I navigate this situation? I don't know if I'm being dramatic or selfish, but in a way it feels like I've been discarded. It's been nearly two weeks since we initially talked about this, and I still feel really shitty and hurt. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I would consider the friendship over in your place. If this is the real reason why you aren't invited, then she is so arrogant as to think she knows your lifelong medical conditions and your limitations better than you. I have no room for people like that in my life. If you have mutual friends, be polite and pleasant if you have to see her, but distant. I would also consider telling one person, ideally someone who is the center of the group. This is not to smear the bride, but to get ahead of her or anyone smearing you. Be clear that you don't expect anyone to take sides, but you feel it would help if someone knew why the friendship between the two of you is over. Comment 2. I am so very sorry you're going through this. I also have a chronic illness, and I totally empathize. If I were in your place, I don't think I would be able to continue the friendship either. I can also empathize with feeling like a burden to your family, too. I would strongly encourage you to look into finding a therapist. Is there a Department of Human Services in your area? They might be able to help you find services at a reduced cost. I really encourage you to look into support groups such as through churches, or again, social service agencies. You deserve to be happy and to have people around you who support you. I wish you the best of luck. Now for the update. Hey Reddit, it's been two weeks since I last posted about my friend not inviting me to her wedding due to my health issues. A lot has happened since then and I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything. First off, let me give you a bit of backstory. My friend, let's call her Sarah, and I have been through a lot together. We met in high school, bonded over our love for cheesy rom-coms, and supported each other through breakups and family drama. Sarah was there for me when I had my stroke a year ago, visiting me in the hospital and helping me with my recovery. That's why her not inviting me to her wedding hit me so hard. After I posted here, I decided to give myself some space from Sarah. I needed time to process my feelings and figure out what I wanted to do, but then, out of the blue, Sarah's sister reached out to me. She told me that Sarah had been acting strange lately, and she was worried about her. Apparently, Sarah had been arguing a lot with her fiancé about the wedding plans, and it seemed like the stress was getting to her. I was surprised when Sarah's sister mentioned that Sarah had been regretting not inviting me. She said that Sarah felt like she had made a huge mistake, but didn't know how to fix it. Hearing that made me feel a mix of emotions. I was angry, sad, but also a little hopeful that maybe we could mend our friendship. A few days later, Sarah showed up at my door, unannounced. She was in tears, apologizing for hurting me. 
She explained that her fiancé had been the one pushing for a smaller wedding due to budget concerns, and he was worried about the potential for medical emergencies. Sarah admitted that she had used my health as an excuse because she didn't want to confront him about his controlling behavior. We had a long talk that night. It was intense, with both of us opening up about our fears and insecurities. Sarah confessed that she had always admired my strength in dealing with my health issues, and she felt guilty for not standing up for me. I told her about my childhood, how I always felt like a burden, and how her not inviting me had reopened old wounds. The conversation was a turning point for us. We agreed to work on our communication and to support each other more. Sarah even asked if I would help her stand up to her fiancé and insist on a wedding that included all her loved ones, regardless of their health. But just when I thought things were getting better, another news dropped. Sarah's fiancé reached out to me, asking to meet in private. He was apologetic and said he wanted to clear the air. We met at a coffee shop and he explained his side of the story. He told me that he had lost a family member to a medical emergency at a wedding when he was younger and it had traumatized him. That's why he was so anxious about having a big wedding. I was starting to sympathize with him until he said something that made my blood boil. He accused me of trying to sabotage their relationship by getting too close to Sarah. He thought that my health issues were a ploy to gain her sympathy and attention. I was shocked and hurt by his accusations. I tried to explain that wasn't the case, but he wouldn't listen. I left the coffee shop feeling angry and betrayed. I couldn't believe that he would think so low of me. I immediately called Sarah and told her what happened. She was furious with her fiancé and promised to confront him about it. The next day, Sarah called me, crying. She had confronted her fiancé and they had a huge fight. He had misunderstood a conversation he overheard between us where I was thanking Sarah for her support during my health struggles. He thought I was manipulating her, but in reality, I was just expressing my gratitude for having such a caring friend. Sarah and her fiance are now in couples counseling, trying to work through their issues. As for me, I'm still hurt, but I'm glad that the misunderstanding was cleared up. Sarah and I are slowly rebuilding our friendship, and she's promised to be more open with me in the future. Husband wants another baby boy, but I'm not sure we can afford it. And then his friend drops a bombshell that my husband had feelings for his wife. Oh boy, I confront him and he admits he settled for me after his crush got into a relationship. Oh boy, I've been stewing over this since Saturday night and it's a lot to unpack, so bear with me. Some background. Husband and I have been married for five years and have one girl. Our relationship has been pretty rocky lately since he replaced drinking with smoking Zaza. He wants another kid, specifically a boy, and I don't think we can afford it. Saturday night we went to a birthday party to celebrate a close friend of ours. His wife and my husband have been friends basically since infancy. Their families have always been close and they went to school together. It's always been kind of acknowledged in the background by other people that they were expected to get together. His mom has made comments in the past, but I always took it sort of jokingly. I know when he came back from his last military leave, she was already in a relationship with her husband, and he met me not long after. Anyway, back to the party. It was a pretty big affair at their house, and the husband got a little tipsy, the first time I've ever seen that happen. He was going on about how much he loves his wife and how she planned the party, which was really sweet. Then he sort of clapped my husband on the back and said, I wouldn't have it all if you hadn't given it up. I laughed, not really getting it, and so did the husband. His wife wasn't around, but my husband was in a state of shock. Then he disappeared for a while and came back drunk and grumpy. When we were driving home, he got high and started ranting about the husband and how much of a jerk he was. Then he started talking about all the things he'd given up to be with me and how his life should be different and also how I'm awful because I would never do what she does. I asked him to clarify and he said if she had waited for me, she wouldn't be with him. He passed out when we got home and I've tried to ask him about it but he claims he doesn't remember, that I have nothing to worry about anyway 
and has been on his phone and stoned basically since then. Looking back, I can see other red flags. When we first got together, he said he didn't want anything serious. The stuff his mom has said, and other stuff that could be seen as competitive with her husband. But this post is already too long. I always thought he looked at her lovingly like a long-term friend would, but I'm wondering now if there's more behind it. She's always been really kind to me and sent us a really thoughtful care package after our baby was born. She has four boys. I was also his first serious relationship, but I think he's been holding a candle for this woman for years. As far as I know, they never dated. I'm not really sure what to do here and looking for advice. He's a good dad when he's not drunk or high and has offered to go to counseling. It's not like he could leave me for her. She's obviously happily married, but I don't want to be with someone who is obviously in love with someone else. Am I crazy or is my husband in love with this woman? Is our relationship even salvageable after this? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I was thinking about divorce specifically regarding a boy. I can just imagine the resentment that comes out when a little sister does. But then again, it's Reddit and divorce is the knee-jerk response. Your husband believes himself to be in love with the friend. It's not real love, but it's enough that I would not be okay with being his backup safety net. If you do find it in yourself to leave, I would give this friend a heads up. It will help avoid the BS he will spin if she hears and understands your perspective and it will protect her because you know that is his first stop after you leave him. If nothing else, please don't have another baby with him. Comment 2. Your husband told you to your face that he resents you for not being another woman. Even if he's not in love with her, he certainly does not love you, at least not in any way that includes deep respect and admiration. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. What he said was cruel. On top of that, it sounds like he has a substance abuse problem. He's a good dad when he's not drunk and high, is not exactly a ringing endorsement. I think you can do a lot better, frankly. Being single is better than being married to someone who talks to you like this. You deserve respect and kindness, always. Now, for the update. So it's been three days since the birthday party bombshell, and let me tell you, things have been intense. I've been trying to piece together the puzzle of my husband's feelings and our rocky marriage while dealing with the aftermath of his outburst. After the party, my husband spent most of Sunday on the couch, alternating between being glued to his phone and staring blankly at the TV. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off, so I decided to do a little digging. I remembered that his mom had always been a bit too interested in his friendship with our friend's wife. It was like she was living in a parallel universe where they ended up together. I never gave it much thought until now. Monday rolled around and I couldn't take the silence anymore. I confronted my husband about the party and his comments. At first, he tried to brush it off, saying he was just venting and didn't mean anything by it. But I pressed on and that's when he dropped a bombshell that left me reeling. He confessed that before he met me, he had been in love with our friend's wife. They never dated, but he always hoped they would end up together. When she got into a relationship with her now husband, my husband was heartbroken. He met me shortly after, and in his words, settled, because he didn't think he could have the life he wanted with her. I was stunned. All this time, I thought we were building a life together, but it turns out I was just a consolation prize. The air was thick with tension as we sat in silence, the weight of his words hanging between us. But then, another surprise. He broke down, apologizing profusely for how he'd acted and for not being honest with me. He admitted that he'd been unfair to me and our daughter by holding on to these feelings for so long. He said he wanted to make things right and suggested we start couples counseling immediately. I agreed, but with a heavy heart. I couldn't help but wonder if our marriage was just a house of cards, ready to collapse at any moment. Tuesday was our first counseling session and it was as intense as you'd expect. We both laid everything out on the table. The counselor helped us navigate through the mess of emotions and misunderstandings. My husband talked about his struggles with substance abuse and how it was a way to cope with his unfulfilled desires. I shared my fears about our financial stability 
and the strain of feeling like I was competing with a ghost from his past. The counselor suggested that we both needed to work on communication and to find ways to reconnect. It was going to be a long road, but we both agreed to give it our all. After the session, my husband did something he hadn't done in a long time. He took our daughter to the park, just the two of them, giving me some much needed space to think. When they came back, he cooked dinner and we actually sat down as a family to eat. It was a small step, but it felt like a giant leap in the right direction. Today, I woke up to find a note from my husband. He'd gone to work early, but he left me a message saying he'd made an appointment with a therapist to address his substance use and that he was committed to being a better husband and father. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.